We need a new design. They killed the infinite Paco range. Long live the infinite Paco range is what I would want to say. But sadly Clay really did us dirty this time and pretty much killed the starvation ranges. You can still build them and you will get the occasional egg from the Pakus. But they are just no longer worth it when it comes to material cost compared to the resources that you get from the starvation ranged Pakus. If you directly want to jump to the setup check out the timestamps. Because I will first explain why I probably will not use Paku starvation ranges in the foreseeable future. Let me give you an explanation to why I think that starvation ranges are no longer viable. By the way, this dropper setup here in the middle is from Flaming Couches from the Steam community. Take this setup here for example. Theoretically, we can have 8 to 9 Paku per row of liquid here. In these 8 tiles of liquid, we can have 9 Paku. And they are still able to reproduce. The issue is, as soon as we have an egg in there, the Paku will become cramped, reducing the reproduction rate to 0%. So we need to take out all the eggs. Otherwise, if we have the Paku and the eggs inside, it will automatically stop all 8 of them from reproducing and laying the one egg in their lifetime. One method to stop Pakus from getting crammed is just placing them inside of pneumatic doors. If we add an egg now and click on the tropical fry for example, we can see that it is crowded but not crammed, not stopping the critter from reproducing once in their lifetime. The issue is if you have any of those critters inside of a door, your critter sensor will not pick them up anymore. You might need complicated setups to count your critter dropping down or counting the critters only once a cycle, which could leave us with a setup that actually counts the critters that go in each of these pockets here. In this setup, it counts to 8 and then closes off the room forever, theoretically letting us take the meat and the eggs should replace the Paku, which just doesn't work long term. Since starvation ranged Pakus lay eggs at around cycle 21, there are more critter inside of the room than there should be, reducing the reproduction rate at that time to 0%, letting us lose critter in the long term, meaning we cannot close this off forever. So for a starvation range we would need to separate the currently reproducing Paku from the replacement eggs of the starvation range Paku. We can have a setup like this. Imagine that the fish feeders are not there, then it would be a starvation range. So the eggs are collected down here, placed in the conveyor loader, fed back to up there. And for all the ranches that are not completely full, the fish will flop to the open door and drop inside refilling it to exactly 8 or 9 Paku, depending on what you set it to. But the issue is, these are really not very productive, these little farms. Each Paku will start as an egg and after 5 cycles become a baby Paku. The Paku will stay a baby Paku for 5 more cycles and then turn into a real Paku with a reproduction rate of 7% per cycle if starvation ranged. Then after around 20 to 21 cycles it will reproduce and lay another egg. At this time you will need 5 more cycles for the Paku to die, giving you 1000 kilocalories in the process. Once the first Paku dies, the next Paku will already be at cycle 5 of being an egg and the cycle after that be a baby Paku again, turn into real Paku, lay another egg and die, giving you another thousand kilocalories. That means we roughly need 25 Pakus per duplicant to feed them correctly on a normal difficulty setting. That is three of these cells right here. And if we are already building these expensive cells with the auto sweepers and the conveyor loaders, it is way cheaper to just feed the Paku. But then we don't want eight inside of them. Feeding the Paku in this setting with just a few seeds that can be harvested pretty much without any resources will give us a way higher reproduction rate of the Paku. One egg every 1.5 cycles, meaning two eggs every three cycles and four eggs every six cycles if the Paku decide to actually eat from the feeder. The maximum for one of these cells is just a single Paku and no longer eight Paku. But even a single fed Paku will give you a whole lot of eggs. Once the Paku reaches age seven, it will lay its first egg, age eight, second egg and so on and so forth. And each single one of these eggs here represents a whole Paku cycle. So we could show it like this. All of this just from a single Paku that is fed. This setup and this setup are both acceptable versions of a part starvation range. We have a feeder range on the top and we do have a few of these smaller lines here, each with at least 8 or 9 Paku that reproduce once in their lifetime. So we get food out of them twice compared to just getting food out of them once. The issue here is this is super expensive for an unfed Paku range. We could just make this slightly bigger, fill it with more water and have more breeder ranges. So even though 
it is still possible to have Paku starvation ranged, it is just not very viable. By the way, these are all the versions that I tried so far. And with that we come to the setup that I would actually use. Of course you can have this as a manual version, but considering the micromanaging that you would need, I prefer the automatic version over the manual version. Starting with the size, we do have exactly 16 tiles, meaning we can house exactly 2 Paku without them being crowded. We do have 3 Paku inside of that, because we also have the water fort, water fort giving the cozy buff for the Paku, happiness plus 1, giving us a happiness of 4 overall, because 8 from feeder is plus 5, cozy is plus 1, tame minus one and because we have one Paku too many in here another minus one giving us an overall happiness of four and still the reproduction rate of 67 percent per cycle personally i think this is the optimal size because eight tiles will give you one Paku, 16 tiles will give you two Paku, and 16 tiles plus a water fort will give you three Paku. you could just have nine tiles and a water fort for two Paku as well but i just couldn't cram in all the equipment that i need for this to run. So this seems to be the sweet spot. So how does this work? It is pretty simple. Each one of these little setups has a critter sensor. The critter sensor is set to below 3. It is connected to the door and if it realizes that we do not have enough Paku inside of the room, like this, the door will open. Once the Paku is old enough and dies, the meat will get collected, dumped inside of the conveyor loader and transported to the left side. If the Paku lays an egg, like this, the egg is collected, dumped in the conveyor loader and transported to the right side. This sensor here checks for fry egg and only if it is a fry egg it will be dumped through this conveyor chute to the right side. Any other Pakus will be dumped to the left because it is just easier that way. If a Paku hatches and there are still setups here with not enough Paku in it, the Paku will flop to the right to get to this water spot here. This makes the pathfinding easier and the Paku will flop faster to your setups. Once they drop, the door will close and we should have exactly 3 Paku. And because nothing works like it should when you record it, we do have 4 Paku. Let me show you the time lapse where this happened. We do have 2 Paku inside of our range and it seems like we are adding exactly one more Paku. But it actually have been 2 Pakus. If we reverse this once again, we now know that it's been two synchronous Pakus flopping around, which is the thing that can happen in most designs with a Paku drop involved. There's no easy way to prevent this, but you can add another of these critter sensor, set it to count critter if above three. So if you have too much critter, send a signal and this signal is being sent to automated notifier. The automated notifier then zooms to the Paku farm. And if we now have one Paku too much, the sensor picks it up and zooms to it. So once again, grab a Paku, place it in, and there we are. And now back to how it should work if it works properly. In this setup right here to the right, we only have two Paku. Now the third Paku dropped, the door will close, and we have the optimal amount of Paku inside of here. Every additional Paku that hatches from the left side will find its way here to the right and be confined in this single tile. This is where you can get your Paku fillet from. Everything else that is collected inside of these setups here in the middle will be dropped here on the left. The slightly more advanced option is this here. What makes this version more advanced, as you can see here on the right, there's almost no Paku that should travel to the right. Most of the Paku will travel to the left once each and every one of these setups is filled. And here again, number 3 has 4 Paku for whatever reason. Thank you game for letting me look bad below 3. Why game? Why? The only key difference of this setup being the automation. I simply hooked up a filter gate. The timing of this is not of relevance, just to keep this door open if the setups are not completely full. Let's drop this Paco here to the left. The setups are not completely full, meaning if this door is open, this door is open, or if this door is open, this door here to the left is open, letting the Pacus through until all of the setups are filled, like this, then the door should close close this door and with a simple knot gate that is connected to this door here the door to the left opens and the door to the left also has a water spot giving the Paku a reason for pathfinding to the left and collecting them all here. I just added a pneumatic door and a few tiles above so we can count with this critter sensor how many Paku we have inside of it. We do have 115 Paku and a single egg. 
Same here for the filter, I set this to fry egg, meaning the egg here on the left is probably a tropical Paco egg or the are they called a gulp fry egg here on the left. What I also did in both setups is I have a storage bin here on the inside that is filled either with algae or with seeds. The storage bin with the algae or with the plant seeds helps to keep the fish feeders filled so your dupes don't have to come by and fill them manually from the top. Of course you could also automatically fill them from down below by placing an auto sweeper in these spots right here. Then you can have another storage bin filled with seeds or algae down here and it will auto fill the storage bins inside. Or the simpler solution, if you actually run out of food inside of these storage bins, just have your duplicate on top, bring some algae or some seeds. Just like this. If the setup number 3 keeps bugging out for some reason, you can also try implementing a simple not gate. And instead of setting the critter sensor to below, you can set it to above 2 for example. So as soon as we hit 3, this should send a green signal, like this. The green signal then traveling to the not gate, changing to red signal and closing this off. Paco, please, please go away. At the moment we do have 4, which is too much. Let's get rid of this one and get rid of this one, this one. So at the moment we only have 2 Paco. And if this Paco now flops inside of our setup right here, the sensor should detect it. Come on, just drop. And close the door, just like this. And with this, you do have three Paco per setup. Of course, you can see that this is modular. You can add as many as you want, but at some length, you will have issue with the pathfinding of the Paco. And the Pacos will flop around way too long to actually get to the water pocket. So either you mirror this vertically and copy the same thing but to the left or you just leave it at a certain length. One of these setups here has 12 Pacos in it. Each Paco will give you 13 new eggs in its lifetime giving you either Paco filet from 13 Paco or 12 usable Paco eggs because you need to replace the breeder Paco plus one Paco filet from the dying breeder Paco. Using only the 13 Paco filet with a thousand kilocalories each divided by 25 will give you 520 kilocalories per cycle per breeder Paco. Of course you can also cook the Paco filet giving you 1600 kilocalories each which would add up to 832 kilocalories each cycle. And what is even better and seriously hilarious one of these little fry eggs here check out the egg cracker scroll down to the fry eggs now has 3200 kilocalories that is double the amount of a regular shovel egg with only one six. Even gulp fry and tropical fry also now have 3200 kilocalories meaning that if we crack one of these eggs now and put them in the electric grill we will have two kilogram of raw egg with each kilogram of raw egg having uh, 1600 kilocalories giving us 3200 complete like it is shown here with the eggs. And once cooked to omelets we will gain 2800 kilocalories per 1600 kilocalories of raw egg giving us a total of 5600 kilocalories from a single freaking Paku fry egg. And here is the summary if you ever need it and before they actually fix the Pacos again. Give the like button a nice little massage. A special thanks to all the patrons and YouTube members here on the screen and I hope to see you all in the next one. Press the subscribe thingy if you don't want to miss any episode. Love you guys and Luma out.